That's right, everyone. You read the title correctly. My team, the Wolverhampton Weaviles, are participating in the third season of the Pokemon Premier League, and I'm so excited to get started. Today, I'm going to go over the team I drafted, why I drafted them, and a general analysis of each Pokemon. By the way, week one of the season will be uploaded on the 18th of August, so I hope you're all hyped. If you want to support the Wolverhampton Weavers this season, be sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. How the draft worked, we all had 120 points and had to draft between 10 and 12 Pokemon. There were more rules to it, but I won't go into them now. Then we had 27 points to spend on a Terra Captains as well, which we could have 2 to 4 of. Each Pokemon was assigned a tier, which determined how much points they would cost, and the draft was in a snake format. I was 7th pick overall, so not too bad of a placement. The following analysis is not in draft order because I can't remember the exact order I drafted them in, and instead will be in the order of the tiers and cost that they were. So starting off we have Palafin, an S tier at 25 points. I wanted something strong, something to really put the pressure on, and having a whopping base 160 attack definitely does just that. Pair that with a strong stab priority move in Jet Punch, and an even stronger stab with Wave Crash, and not a lot wants to switch into that. We also have Stab Flip Turn for keeping up momentum, Ice Punch in Close Combat for coverage, and you know what? We even have a nice base 106 special attack to play with if we really want to. Palafin isn't a Terra Captain and wasn't even allowed to be, which is good, makes things a bit more balanced. Some notable items to use on this monster are the likes of the Choice Band, Life Orb, and even the Assault Vest, but that doesn't mean I'll be using them. Part of the draft experience is thinking out of the box and adapting to your opponent's potential team, right? But yeah, that's team member number one, the Heroic Palafin. Next up we have Iron Moth. This thing is a monster as we all know. I needed something that would pair well offensively with Palafin and this thing fits just perfectly. It's an A tier Pokemon at 18 points and is not a Terror Captain nor could it be. Having a base 140 special attack with a good speed tier of 110 is nothing to scoff at, making it a powerful specially offensive threat for real. It even has a nice base 80 HP and 110 special defense, so it can take special hits pretty well too. It has the move Fiery Dance, a strong stab fire move that can boost your special attack by one stage, and stab Sludge Wave for coverage too against those pesky fairies. We even have coverage moves in Discharge, Dazzling Gleam, Hurricane and Energy Ball to name a few, with agility to raise our already high speed stat. Just like Palafin, it is limited to one ability, but a great one at that. Quark Drive is great for boosting speed or special attack, to make it even more of a threat. You could even run choice specs for more raw power or heavy duty boots to avoid hazards. Little side note, it's also nice to have a grounded poison type to absorb those toxic spikes as well. That's it for number two, the Mecha Kaiju Iron Moth. I couldn't not draft Corviknight, right? I use it all the time. It's easily one of my favorite Pokemon at the moment. And with a base 105 defense, 98 HP and 85 special defense, can you blame me? The thing's a bulky monster. Corviknight is a B tier Pokemon costing 16 points and can be a Terra Captain with one Terra type, but I decided against it. I'd rather have the variety of types I could choose from on a lower tier Pokemon. It's primarily used as a defensive hazard clearer with Defog, but you can utilize moves like Iron Defense and Body Press to make it a potential defensive sweeper as well. Other notable... Other notable moves include Brave Bits for Stab, U-Turn for Momentum, Roost for Recovery, and also Bulk Up if you want to set up. You'd usually run items like Rocky Helmet or Heavy Duty Boots, but Leftovers, Citrus Berry, and even Choice Band are also potentially viable options. Yes, I said Choice Band. I've been on the other end of that one, and it was not fun for me anyway. That's it for the Armored Menace, Corviknight. Thunderous Virion is a B tier costing 17 points and unfortunately was not able to be a Terra Captain. However, that does not make it bad by any means. This thing's a monster with its astounding base 145 special attack, 101 speed, and even its 105 attack. This thing packs a punch. Unfortunately, it does not get Hurricane to take advantage of the next Pokemon, but still a good offensive threat. It also gives me an immunity to Electric with its Volt Absorb ability, as well as potential Sweeper with Nasty Plot. Notable moves include the famous Thunderbolt, Focus Miss, Grass Knot, Volt Switch, and U-Turn, and even Knock Off for utility. Slap a pair of Choice Specs on it, or equip it with a Focus Sash to get a free Nasty Plot, and things can go off the rails for your opponent real quick. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this monster, but we'll save that for future battles. And that's it for the God of Thunder, Thunderous Therian. 
Polyzoad is a C tier Pokemon costing only 8 points, and I just had to have it. It's so cute. Not that that's a great reason to draft a Pokemon, but it has its perks. For example, its ability Drizzle setting up the rain, boosting its offensive water type moves coming off a base 90 special attack. Not too bad. This also helps other members of the team like Iron Moth's Hurricane, Palafin's water move power, and Thunderous being able to run Thunder for a stronger electric stab. Pair that with the Dam Rock and you have rain for days. It has some decent move coverage as well with Surf, Ice Beam, Earth Power, and even Focus Miss. You can also utilize Encore and Haze to stop Self Sweepers or Encore defensive Pokemon into redundant moves. Politoed could have been a Terra Captain using three Terra types, but I decided against it. It's mainly there for rain setup and even water absorbing if my opponent has a particularly water type threat. Drizzle is also useful for stopping sun setup for protosynthesis users and general weather warfare as well. That's it for Kermit the Politoed, on to the next one. Look, I know this looks weird, but Florges is a hidden gem, I swear by it. Florges was a C tier Pokemon worth 10 points and is in fact a Terra Captain with the types Fire and Steel. I chose Florges as a Terra Captain because I see potential in it as a special sweeper with Calm Mind or even Choice Specs with that decent 112 special attack stat. Fun fact, Baton Pass is also allowed, but you cannot pass on stat boosts or substitutes as part of the rules. Utilizing moves like Alluring Voice with Throat Spray, Chilling Water for defensive purposes, then the hard hitting Moonblast, Terror Blast, Fire or Steel, Giga Drain for more power and healing, and even Wish Support for the team. This thing can do a lot of work for the team. Heck, I might even run Assault Vest at some point, making it impossible to KO on the special side with a base humongous 154 special defense. Anyway, that's all i got to say about Flower Power Florgis. On to the next one. Verizon is a D tier costing 6 points and is not a Terra Captain. I looked at the tiers, scratching my head thinking I needed a fighting type, and that's when I saw it. Not only can it be run physical with Swords Dance set, you can also run it special with a Calm Mind set too. With access to strong stab moves in close combat, Leaf Blade, Aura Sphere, and Giga Drain, base 90 in both of Sense's stats isn't amazing, but as we've proven before with Yan Mega, after a Swords Dance, anything can be a physical threat. Put that with a base 108 speed and you are pretty fast threat. Its justifiability is nice too, giving it an attack boost whenever it takes a resisted dark type move, like the ever common knockoff, making it even more of a threat for sure. Anyway, enough about the Forest Guardian Verizon, let's move on to the next one. Espeon is a D tier as well, sitting at 7 points and is not a Terra Captain. It's an interesting Pokemon with a nice base 110 speed and 130 special attack, and the amazing ability in Magic Bounce to reflect status moves and entry hazards at the back of the opponent. Also, easily my favourite evolution as well, so I just had to have it. Having a strong, fast Psychic type is always a good thing as well. With moves like Stab Psychic, Alluring Voice and Shadow Ball for coverage, and even Car Mind for setup, you can have your opponent on their knees. You could also run it for support with Dual Screen Light Clay and Wish Support too. Notable items include Choice Scarf and Choice Specs with Trick, Light Clay for screens, and even Berries for weakening super effective attacks. It's frail, but if it lives the hit, you're done for. That's all I've got for the Mystical Espeon, moving on. I wanted a ground type, and I wanted a ghost type too, so why not both in one Pokemon? Palisand is a D tier Pokemon sat at 6 points like Verizon, and is also a Terra Captain with the three types of Water, Grass, and Dark. I like Palosand as it's a bulky monster of a Pokemon, able to take physical hits for days, and if you're hit by a Water type move with Water Compaction, then your defenses get boosted too. Pair that with Terra Water or Grass and you're golden. It even has Stealth Rock for utility and Shore Up for recovery. With a nice base 110 defense and 85 HP, you can't go wrong with it. And also, it has a nice 100 special attack, so it can fight back hard if it wants to. You can run Rocky Helmet or Leftovers to name a couple of items, or even Boots for easy switching in and out. That's it for the Haunted Sandcastle Palo Sand. Next we have... That's right, I drafted Kamala. And what? Wanna fight about it? Kamala is a D tier Pokemon sat at a mere 4 points, because the admins have no idea how good Kamala really is. With a massive 150 in attack stat and respectable 65 speed to boost with rapid spin, also useful for clearing hazards, then you can sell Pessoa's Dance? Oh, it's GG. You can't even burn it or anything thanks to its ability Comatose. Kamala can even support the team with Wish if you want to. I've got a lot of Wishmons on my team, huh? Knockoff is a great support move and it even has priority in Sucker Punch. You could run this with lefties, boots, or even a choice band to name a few if you're really ballsy. 
But for real, at this point in the draft, I was just looking for types I didn't have, and Pokemon with little niches I could fill. For example, I have a Defogger and a Magic Bouncer, but I didn't have a Rapid Spinner, and wasn't exactly spoiled for choice at this stage of the draft. But alas, I'm happy with this pick because I haven't actually used Kamala at all during Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so it's a refreshing change. Moving on from the Sleepy Koala, we have... Fracture is an E-tier, costing just 2 points, and is in fact my final Terra Captain. Able to use 4 types, which I chose Steel, Poison, Fighting, and Fire. I needed a Dragon type, and we're nearing the end of the draft. I had 3 points to spend, and I wanted to use all 12 slots for my team, as much variety as possible. I needed a Dragon type, and we were nearing the end of the draft. I had 3 points to spend, and wanted to use all 12 slots for my team, for as much variety as possible and Fracture fit the bill nicely. I actually picked Golem at first, but instead changed my mind and swapped it for Fracture during the grace period. No regrets there. Fracture is for sure something my opponents will sleep on, but you know what? For a not fully evolved Pokemon to have a huge base 117 attack stat and access to Dragon Dance, yeah, I'll be catching people off guard for sure. It has access to pretty much all of the moves Hactress gets except from Earthquake and Close Combat, but it still gets priority in First Impression, Iron Head, Dragon Claw, Poison Jab, and even Low Kick if you wanted. It has the abilities Rivalry, Mold Breaker, and Unnerve, and only two of those are really any good. Mold Breaker is great for bypassing priority stopping abilities like on Serena to hit them with super effective First Impression, and even Unaware has its users since berries are so common in draft. But that's it for the Baby Dragon Fracture. And finally, we have... Look, I know what you're thinking, but I had one point left and the only one pointer E tier I could see that had potential was my Tiena. It has a decent base 90 attack and 70 speed, but with the ability Quick Feet, you can double that speed or not double it, but times 1.5 with a Toxic Orb and even Snowball out of control with Moxie. Intimidate is also a great ability, making physical threats less threatening. It has access to some cool moves too, in Sucker Punch for priority, Crunch, Play Rough, and even Psychic Fangs. Dragonite wants to use you to sell for Dragon Dance, Foul Play. Same with Dragon Pool. Overall, my Tiena is a cool mon. Not the best by any means, but still a cool mon. And that's pretty much it's all got And that's pretty much all it's got going for it. But that's it, the final squad for season three of the PPL, the Wolverhampton Weaviles. Let me know your thoughts on the team, I'd love to hear your opinions on it, and be sure to check out all the people participating this season. You'll find all their links in the description down below. Look forward to the first game on August 18th, put it in your calendar, or even easier, subscribe and ding the bell. With all that being said, good luck to everyone in the league, and I'll see you all in a bit.